for all of the vocal proponents of child sacrifice out there on the interwebs. And that this is happening within the first two seconds of the show. I should say, listen to last week's episode before anybody responds with a hateful <laughs> comment. And I see you in the comment section. I, I have encountered you. I know what you're up to. I'm already typing. I'm already but, typing. Uh, uh, you know, respond in the comments down below. Still accepting of a handy or no? Doc, <laughs> Doc wants to know. <laughs> it's a compelling subject matter, but it's the best birth control that many of us have ever found. Especially Again, I don't in know Arizona. why anyone would like a hand job. It's like, who who just goes for an appetizer when you got the main course right there? <laughs> Sometimes you gotta sure feed you... yourself. I was like, I'm not <laughs> sure you always have the main course right there, friend. But oh yeah. well, some of us. <laughs> got it on speed dial. Orders delivery. <laughs> Yeah, 60 minutes I, or less or it's free listen I know there's a lot of cross-eyed inebriated Canadians in the world <laughs> but I, it can't be that many truly yeah that's fair <laughs> <laughs> just, just remove a few ribs and go to town I don't know there's beer goggles there's a fish eyed lens and then there's a fucking fish bowl and I understand some people do live in those but I haven't met them yet so we'll just leave that where it lay uh, speaking of Canada outside right now uh is insane and like i step outside oh, i can actually see yeah i can you're, see you're, smoke. you're, you're part you of the whole smoke it. covering and all that it's ah. raining molasses in, in yeah. west virginia i'm i was not west virginia <laughs> well, i'm trying not. to throw people off the scent i don't want them to send possums to your house oh that's well, it's fair. covering well, I got like a big crawl space so it's okay it's true <laughs> it, he, and he's been setting traps in it for at least several months now Who and knows? you don't like hand jobs so at least you could use the possum yeah, but no, it's it's legitimately like I was I was actually un initially unaware that something was going on in Canada. I hadn't looked at the news or anything, oh. <laughs> so I hadn't like been aware of the wildfires. And then I go outside and I was like, man, there's something's going on here because you could smell it. And it was all like the skies were all like that. So then I Google it thinking something was happening locally. And no, nope, it's coming down. Yeah, I was it's like, like oh my goodness. it's like really far north, like past Montreal and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I, I was just amazed that it impacted me down here. I was like, oh little taste of home yeah, it's uh it's a quick <laughs> what was it i read that uh if you breathed in the air that's currently in new york city like 24 hours exposed to that air is equivalent to smoking like six cigarettes or something like that it's got wow. like that they they beat the record america's number one again in the rankings of worst air quality in the world new york city it's like twice as bad as new delhi 12 years running yes oh yeah they're, they're really striving to hit that that glorious height I, I'm going to, one, I'm going to have a lot of issues focusing this evening. I can feel it because uh, I'm scatterbrained, oh. uh, flipping back in the world. And there is an absolute like feline exorcism taking place behind me right now, <laughs> which is important to note. So as I had mentioned pre-roll, I have not slept soundly for probably, I was looking back at my charts uh, through my Fitbit for at least a month. I have not had like a good sleep score. I have oh, had geez. like fair to poor sleep scores because one, this cat who I adore, uh, Magdalena is the neediest cat. She loves to be in and around people and she hates closed doors. When we were, when we first got her, when she was a kitten, she had to be kept away from the other cat so that there wasn't territoriality or anything like this. And she is a people cat she wants to be around everybody she wants to see what's happening so she does status checks she will actually go and try to find where everybody is in the house so that she can account for everybody and if she can't find them she freaks out and starts yelling so she's now at the door behind me screaming through the door <laughs> so if she's not around you or near you she starts raising the alarms and then Margot has apparently started just she's all she's a fastidious groomer so she's constantly cleaning herself which means that she has got fur balls on on demand and apparently the time that she has sourced out to relieve herself of this is 4 a.m because almost <laughs> no fail she starts the hacking and the <laughs> at 4 a.m so i wake up thinking that a goddamn demon has laid siege to my home <laughs> run around and then i get to go try to find where the wet spot is which just lovely yeah needless to say so i'm like sleep deprived finally getting back into the, the swing of being you know forced to interact with human beings again and i say all of that to get around to this interesting story i'm allow me to to watkins for a moment here 
So oh. cool thing happened in my job. Uh, I was leaving, and I, of course, on my first day, I want to represent well. So I was wearing my Stephen King Dark Tower gunslinger shirt. Of course. And I'd finished the first day of work. It's eight hours of, you know, exhaustive troubleshooting and preparatory for like, this is what happens, you know, when you need to deal with a bomb threat. So <laughs> a lot of fun. So, Michael, I'm sure you can sympathize here. Yeah. But I get to the, the corner and, you know, the joys of Portland, uh, keep Portland weird does not need to be extolled to the general public they're doing it very well on their own <laughs> they're fine they don't need to be any weirder they've gotten the level they've reached the goal they don't need to go any further hack the mainframe i have to say i enjoyed last <laughs> week's at the end of last week's episode between the cockroach commando and michael actually having <laughs> jokes i i don't know how i composed myself but uh, so i'm standing here and if you could imagine laurel and hardy as a couple uh with you know Male and female, you can proportion this out however you want to, but it's a couple of very disheveled, fun-looking folks standing on the corner, and a guy sees my shirt, and he goes, dude, cool shirt. And I'm like, thank you. I haven't heard dude since the 90s in Southern California. <laughs> and then he's like, I read that when I was in jail. Nice. <laughs> cool story, bro. And I I literally had to do, it's been a while since I've had to do the Arnold Schwarzenegger like T-800 uh, Terminator list of prepared responses because i was like there's got to be one there's got to be one <laughs> yeah, i'm trying were you to cycle for, through and i landed into fuck you asshole and then just walked across <laughs> the the intersection and then i was fine but yeah it was, it was a it was a rough go wait you but, really said fuck you asshole no you, oh, I, I, okay. i'm making it <laughs> okay so for the you three know, people who've know. seen terminator in the world here that's what he ends up on when he's scrolling through appropriate <laughs> responses do you got a dead cat in there no i did <laughs> that not would have been insane without first knowing what he was in jail for <laughs> well you I, I asshole my responding like a, a german cybernetic organism would have been sufficient to you know ward him <laughs> off but uh, no so I, I had an interesting conversation. Then he started yelling at me lobstrosity terms. And his <laughs> cohort did not understand what the fuck he was doing. So if you can imagine myself and this individual downtown Portland at 5 o'clock in the afternoon with the traffic and the trams. And this guy's yelling, Daddy Chad, dumb a chum. And I was like, fucking kill me. Just... <laughs> And I turned around and was like, if you're really trying to make me walk in front of this train with lobstrosity quotes, like, I'll do it. Don't tempt me. It's <laughs> it's hard enough living in this world as it is. And all I'm saying is sometimes you just want to get to a by the eternal. Behold. Behold. It is the Disinformed Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Doc. And I'm Michael. Oh, we've killed the shtick. It's officially ah. dead. The bit's gone the way of the dodo. <laughs> but <About> uh, time. <laughs> In any event, uh, interesting things. I'm looking forward to, to more rambling tales from the road as I get back into interacting with the general <laughs> public, suppressing my need to dispatch individuals on the daily. It's going to be good. But uh, so, so, lest we ask the, the crazy question, we have an episode this evening. Oh, we certainly do. I'm excited. So for Same. those of you who are blissfully unaware, what we typically do on the show is we like to delve into random esoterica, and in the course of discussing it, we lie a little bit. We're explaining it to you, the listeners, and to the co-hosts. The co-hosts, however, it's our job to try to ferret out the fact from the fiction as we listen in order to keep the things interesting. But don't worry if we don't get it and you don't get it. There's a denouement at the end of the show. We discuss what we lied about and why. And hopefully we had a few yucks in between. But Michael this evening is going to hep us to my favorite of all of the Norwegian Christmas celebratory acts, the slap fight. Ooh, actually, yeah, it, 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 it's not necessarily Norwegian, but we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Just so the bit, man. I, I mean, like, it, it, who knows? Who knows? Maybe, it maybe might be practice in there. It's close enough to where we'll be talking about. But uh, I've seen I wanna... a few of these clips lately of it. It's pretty, uh, it's getting more and more intense there. Yeah, and what, don't worry. What, don't worry about that. <laughs> what drives me bonkers about some of the ones I've seen is, like, the one guy will take a legal hit. You know, and he'll take it. He'll be up on his feet and everything. Legal? Uh, legal, yes. He'll take a legal slap. Of but course, then, you have to. <laughs> but then he will deliver an illegal slap. And so it's like the guy that delivered the legal slap ends up getting whapped in the face with an illegal slap. And it, it's it, and he has to continue on. Like, all there is is a loss of a point. I'm like, that seems so 
ridiculously unfair. Now, an yeah. illegal slap is when you put your finger in the person's ear before the contact. Oh, well, or when you're like, it's, it's when you lick. You got to lick Ooh. the ear. Very gentle. Well, you actually lick your ma- your hand, and We're then you just We're not talking about like... hand jobs again. Come on. Oh well, we got uh, off that topic. I, I, I mean, that is that is a penalty, and I, I'm, I'm just I'm just telling everyone the the rules here. It's a penalty yeah. to me if you don't lick your hand personally. You, yeah, it's just <laughs> well, you got to. I mean, like you know, a little desert. bit of lotion, maybe. No, you got to make it dry like a desert. Sand Sand lotions. Paper. <laughs> lotions are how you get UTIs, man. Don't play Ooh. around with that stuff. <laughs> uh. The chafing. Or coffee bottles, but you know we're not going to talk about that today. Coffee, bo- you know coffee what? bottles. I I don't want to know. I want to know, but Trust I don't want to. You know. don't. No, you I don't. don't. No one wants to know. Okay, I, I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm is this going a section to... where I need to ask everybody how we're doing this week. Is this, what are you guys up to? <laughs> I'm going to pivot and okay. not answer that question and tell Good. a story. Tell a brief point story. Deducted. He pivoted. But... Point deducted. Is that an illegal I, slap? Yeah. Yes, you can't okay. pivot. Yeah, it's all arm. Flat it's all arm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You got to stand. You got to brace yourself. You can't move either when you're receiving. But anyway, I'm going to set uh, set the mood a little bit. <laughs> I went back to hand gonna, jobs on my mind again. I'm sorry. Set the mood. Oh yeah, I broke yeah. The sorry. Wall. In the camera. In the camera. Yeah. It looks like I'm. I'm. I'm well, also, uh, you here. said when receiving, you can't move. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's not that's, happening. That's true. Just be that's careful true. the ears that you have around you, sir. And what? And and powder is very very useful. Anyway. Uh, Not you, Shane, him. You and your neighbor, Dimitri, have been at each other's throats all season. I never met my neighbor. What the hell are you talking about? I just got well, a house. <laughs> let's just put ourselves in this Russian oh, farmer's shoes. I forget. Shoe. Yes, you you do enjoy your narrative. Okay, I I, love I'm with you. Narratives. I'm it's here. Great. I'm with you. Right. Okay. Dimitri. Dimitri. You're I'm with it. No, neighbor Dimitri. Exactly. Exactly. Put some on you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they've been After at the each other's. Job. You've been at each other's throats all season. His goat eats some of your wheat, your pigs eat some of his cabbages, your son's party until the wee hours of the morning, and his daughter gave all of them the clap in response. Oh my finally, god. <laughs> finally, the straw that breaks the camel's back lands with the brute force of a T-34. During an attempt at a conceal... Uh, so, sorry, T-34 is a, Soviet, so, is a Russian tank, so I, I just wanted to make a little reference there. I'm so sorry. Soviet? Soviet. I can never like pronounce a, a hippie Soviet? in the army. Soviet. I can never pronounce Soviet. it correctly. Soviet. Soviet. Yeah. So, not soy, not soy. Soviet. Well, there's so soy boys in my imagine eyes. Imagine the Viet Cong. Okay. And then say so what? Now, so what? Soviet. 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 Oh, Soviet. There you okay. go. So be. All right. I good thing I don't say that really Settle that word here at all in this episode, so we're fine. Okay, during an attempt at reconciliation between you two, your eldest son knocks over Dimitri's homemade bathtub vodka while blacked out, spilling a month's worth all over the ground. Now I gotta slap my son. Well, he was blacked out. You can't really blame anyone in that case, right? That's what we've established that goes on here. Don't don't and cry over spill vodka. Yeah, exactly. I thought you just uh, said yeah, so vodka, not black Russian. No, 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 no. Just, just straight vodka. No, no black Russian, no white Russian, none of that. But there, he was blacked out. Yeah, he was blacked out on vodka, not black Russians. Okay, all right. I'm, yeah, yeah. This sorry. narrative is really hard to follow. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's it's <laughs> difficult. I know. It's it's difficult to picture you trying to reconcile with your neighbor and also having an eldest son. So it, yeah. it's fair. Yeah. And right. he's a Soviet. Yes. <laughs> uh, so Dimitri demands that you pay for the vodka. Uh, and you come back with that the vodka should have been spilt. It wouldn't have been spilt. If it wasn't being offered in the first place, if it's just being set on the table and everyone's blackout drunk, of course someone's going to walk into it. Yeah, Haven't you jerk, ever seen how it? How dare you offer me vodka? But you well, said it they... was in a bathtub. No, no, no. It was made in a bathtub. It's not. <laughs> I when know. You serve I, just vodka, said... <laughs> I mean, that would be I'd a lot serve of vodka. It in the bathtub. That I'd be in the bathtub with the vodka, dipping oh. it out with a ladle. Just anybody <laughs> that came by, enjoy the fruits of my labor. <laughs> oh. Man, Shane knows how to throw one hell of a party. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's maybe he should have been in those shoes instead of uh, this uh, hypothetical third person. Uh, You've anyway. never seen my white light, then. Oh no! <laughs> Rather than coming to blows and a possible blood feud, you decided to work it out the gentlemanly way. To work, to work it. <laughs> to work it out. Is that how everybody got the clap again? <laughs> oh no! It keeps happening. You just, so you, you decided decide, to work it out. Got gotcha. well, it out the gentlemanly way. After that much way. vodka, you know, you might be twerking a little bit. You know, yes. Tequi- vodka so, makes my clothes fall off. Exactly. 
It's uh, one of my favorite day... Def Leppard songs. Twerk it out. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Twerk it out. Uh, the next day, you and Dimitri are standing opposite each other um, with a large tree stump between yourselves. <laughs> okay? That's the next day. That's how you decide to, to you know, settle this a gentlemanly way. Okay? Sure. Dimitri Found got wood. Scene tree transition. Stump, gotcha. You and him are standing opposite each other with a tree stump in the middle. Okay. A coin toss declares Dimitri as the first to attack. He first t- touches your cheek with his palm before winding back. This is actually an important aspect, especially in modern day uh, slap fighting. Okay. So he touches your cheek. He doesn't like, you know, gently caress it. He just touches it so that he knows where he's hitting. He's so he aiming. He's aiming. Right. So he winds his hand back. He does this three times while counting out loud every time he pulls his hand away from your face. At whatever three is in Russian, you grab the edge of the tree stump and brace for impact. The open-handed slap across your chin smarts, but it's nothing you haven't experienced before. A glancing blow, nothing more. Now for the return. Your turn. You smile as you line up your shot, just like Dimitri did. One, two, three. You catch him dead center in his cheek, dead center of his cheek, and Dimitri drops like a sack of potatoes. And then we turn him into vodka. Yes, exactly. Is there a bathtub around? Uh, Just a tree stump? Well, because he knocked over, we changed the story so that your eldest son knocked over the bathtub full of vodka. Yeah, but there could, the bathtub was nowhere involved in that. So, well, and I'd I mean, like to think between the two of us neighbors, we have more than just one bathtub. Well, this is also like Russian farmer, so who knows? It was probably just made in a dirt hole or something. I don't know. Okay, so this is like uh, where Rasputin came from. That's yeah, oh, exactly. I was just about to say that. <laughs> no bathing allowed. So thankfully, Dimitri's catcher stops Dimitri from smacking his face on the tree stump. Dimitri is the pitcher. Is that right? <laughs> no, he's like, well, I guess that's fair. Yeah, he's a catcher and you got a pitcher and all that. Yeah. Now, who's on first? Because he's twerking. I what? got it. <laughs> no, what? What is on first? Why? Who's on second? No, why is on third? How? How is not even? Up? He's not even up to bat. Who? He's in the dugout. I already said who's on second. All right, we're going to do the whole bit. <laughs> it's, an, it's a good bit. I like the bit. Uh, uh, class Dimitri- Huh? How? Metal Gear. No. <laughs> it can't be. Metal Gear. They can hear my ass <laughs> cheeks clapping. <laughs> From- <laughs> Dimitri's not getting slapped. It's just me running. <laughs> Silent Snake, my ass. <laughs> snake! <laughs> Dimitri is out cold. It takes him a good minute before he comes out of it. When he does, Dimitri and all those present acknowledge you as the victor and subsequently the winning party in the argument. You won another round of slap fighting. I've given first... credit for the subsequent. I'm sorry. Now, That's, it's a rarity. I you did, that. I'm I, so I, proud of you. I wanted to. I wanted to. Yes. Did he, did he relieve his bowels during his time passed out? Well, he did didn't he die. Literally... No, I'm just kind of hoping we <laughs> slap the shit out of him. No. <laughs> What is what is with you and just releasing your bowels? You were doing it no, going, going to death row. You were doing it when <laughs> no, you were getting slapped. You guys- hey, listen, if he's a fecal filiac, I'm not sh- kink shaming anything <laughs> Thank here. You. I Thank just- you. There, always- <laughs> there has to be one in this podcast. It's a requirement. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. There's a quota that needs to be met. Uh, when I first heard of the existence of this sport, I originally saw a version of it on YouTube practiced by some red-blooded Americans in the Deep South. Mm. And immediately assumed it was some backwoods thing that only Hicks practiced because they were too inbred to do anything else with their time. Yipes. <laughs> and we just yeah, lost that some was of the a little audience. bit. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought was, I uh... went hard at the good folks of Arkansas last week, but no, you're just full blazing now. Uh, yeah, that was uh, that was a bit that was a bit tough. I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm not taking go. it back though. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this sport is. Uh, I was wrong. I was very wrong. It wasn't just practice there. Uh, it was. It, it's not just practice in the boonies, far away from the prying eyes of us city folk. No, it is much more than that. An international sport practiced not just in the good old U.S. of A., but in places like Poland and Russia as well. Uh, a sport with rigid rules and a culture of gentlemanly sportsmanship. And that is what I'm going to talk to uh, oh, yeah. talk about. Every today. single one of those guys I've seen, first thought that came to mind, gentlemen. Well, I don't. I don't know what kind of slap fighting you've you've watched. Um, if you've been watching more of the like UFC slap fight, I think it's called or power slap. Power that slap. might be a little bit different because you know they have that whole showboatsmanship that that comes with being part of the UFC. Um, but like if you watch older videos where it's just like very very like 
local groups doing things, it becomes a little bit more gentlemanly like. They show up in a three piece suit. They take off the jacket first, roll up their sleeves, uh, loosen oh, yeah. the tie a little bit. Have a cup of tea, you know, before and after if they can still, Flick you know, the spend- talk with their face. And then whack. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And a See? little bit of fisticuffs. As popular as we are on YouTube, I, I thought that, you know, when you said gentlemen, I was thinking the typical comment threads. Oh, <laughs> gentlemen and culture. But so, yes, that would apply to power slap, but uh, not sure where it would go for every other place. Fair. Um, so we're going to start at the beginning, back to antiquity, where so much of Western civilization was born. So we're how going... Dimitri first came into the story. Yes. No, we're going back to ancient Greece. Yes. All right. All right. The, the ancient Greeks, who were always down for a good tussle, were always coming up with new ways to kill or maim each other. You didn't say how many lies, friend. Oh, there are six. I Thank am you. so sorry. Oh, you're fine. I just want to make so sure we excited. caught it. It's been months. I've been so excited that I completely <laughs> forgot how to actually comport myself. You're backed up. I get uh, it. Just, oh, just yeah. To c- just to confirm, all six still remain, correct? Yes. Usually okay. when I tell... Well, I guess I can't say usually when I tell a story, there's not a lie. Because I have lied before in, in stories and those uh, narratives. I, I, but I trust nothing that you say or Shane say and says anymore. Oh, don't worry. He would never tell a list lie. Boom, list lie. I, you guys are. I never that said was, I would never tell a list lie. That was me being naive. That From was the me moment being naive. we snap, I'm looking for lies. <laughs> looking for How's lies it going? in I'm all the wrong Bullshit. place. <laughs> um, you don't even own a cat. <laughs> oh damn like all oh, i should have <laughs> he's just playing he's just playing some sounds in the background that sound like a cat <sighs> just digging deep into that lie it's just alistair crowley on all fours <laughs> <laughs> it's a submissive phase um so <laughs> uh the ancient greeks are always looking they were always trying to invent new ways to kill or maim each other naked y- yes Forcing. yeah no, not twerking. That wasn't invented until modern day. Surprisingly so. At least that we know. We haven't found any record of it. There are- this <laughs> is Sparta. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Gotta be watching oh, for that one, I guess. That's how he, get, like, that's how he knocks it in with his ass cheeks. He just anyway. bump tussles him like Snake mm-hmm. Plissken, yes. Uh, I mean, if, you're in, if your culture invents something like the Brazen Bull... You know, that method of torture, which I don't know if you guys know what that is. It's where you Mm. lock someone into a bronze statue of a bull and you have a fire going under underneath and it's supposed to slowly roast the person inside. It's it's a. Are you going to serve him at a feast later or? No, no. I mean, it's supposed to be a form of torture. So I presume you pull him out before he dies. I don't know. But yeah, yeah, you you pretty much are. Longhorns? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how the longhorns came (laughs) to be, right? That's right. I mean, that's how they do their pregame stuff, right? Like they they usually sacrifice one of their fans. Yeah, they smoke the, the mascot. Yeah. So exactly. in Austin, where I was living until relatively recently, we have a big statue of a bull like what you're referencing. And so I immediately thought of that and was like, Oh, is there some poor soul trapped inside there from some hey! bygone? <laughs> Somebody from Texas A and M or something. <laughs> <laughs> have there been any missing stu anyway? Um <laughs> So, yeah, if if you invent something like the brazen bull, of course, you're going to, like, try and invent new ways to just hurt each other. Um, how, however, the Greeks also came with this, uh, also realized this important, like, aspect of fighting. You only can die once. And if you enjoy fighting someone, you'd probably want to fight them again, right? Thus, games where you fight people but don't necessarily die were invented. Okay. I mean, Dave Mustaine would tell you you can't die dead enough. So fair, and that was like something that Homer had said that uh, this guy had actually uh, co-opted. Homer one, said that in one of his uh, legendary poems. One mm. could argue that to live is to die. And uh, yeah, so I was, I was, or okay, live and let die. I... You can and only die. He twice. brought up Mustaine. I just thought, yes. Oh, that's actually not bad. Is that a Spread James wings. Bond reference? I don't know. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so so this is where we get wrestling. This is where we get bare knuckle boxing. Yes, actually. Uh, that was what I was going to kind of reference. Um, I, I'm only going to touch upon that a little bit and more focus on uh, slap fighting. But yes, this is where uh, wrestling, uh, bare knuckle boxing, like a lot of these sports that people still kind of practice today um, came from. 
uh, games specifically involving vid- individuals fighting each other go back as far as the 8th century BC, uh, around when Homer's Iliad was thought to have been written. While records involving said sports are either fragmented or exaggerated through legends like the Iliad, we do know that boxing and wrestling and what we know as slap fighting were big sports. Uh, they were so popular that all three were major attractions for the ancient Olympics. While there is boxing, wrestling, and slap fighting, mm-hmm. really, slap fighting was goes all the way back then as being part of the Olympics. Well, yeah, I mean, is that a like, lie? no, yeah, it was a lie. Yeah, okay. Slap fighting like, oh, was not. Gonna, I was yeah. like, why am I even asking? I should just call a lie. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, <laughs> honestly, because because if you go and riff on it, then who knows? You might well, just that's be exactly. Convi- yeah. Well, that's what I was like. I'm giving him the opportunity to lead me down a path that I'll walk from, and then later it'll be like, ah, I got caught by it again. But my ass, I didn't even try and come up with a good no, retort Shane to it. I was like, ah! at it. <laughs> Shane, yeah. Shane would have immediately taken me down a story, and I've been like, oh, really? Oh, wow. But you paused, and I was like, ah, there's an opportunity here. So there is the there's the Greek god. Slopetrius, who is actually the the <laughs> god of the overhand slap, and uh, yes, they they named the games in his honor in four seven seven BC, and and you can't forget about his you know his brother Backhandicus. Yes, you know. indeed. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes, and their uh, cousin Stankonia, and uh, Stankonia <laughs> was was the king of all slapping. Put some stank on it, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looked so, shockingly reminiscent of Ike Turner for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> so, oh, R.I.P. Tina. So, so you're, you were right. You were right. Slap fighting wasn't really prevalent in the Olympics. It was actually uh, kind of used differently in ancient Greek culture, and uh, I'll, I'm going to kind of lead into it. While there, is a, while there is evidence of slap fighting going back to the Minoan and Mycenaean period, so like ancient ancient Greece, there isn't clear proof concerning its origins. Only legends and myths surround its creation. One such legend involved Theseus, the mythical king and founder of Athens, who one day decided to settle an argument between commanders who disagreed with battlefield tax- tactics. Taxes. Taxes! Battlefield taxes! I gotta pay, pay that up. toll. Pay up, bitch! Who's that uh, clopping <laughs> across my brain? <laughs> bitch better have my money! <laughs> Uh, since Theseus did not want them to fight to the death and deprive him of at least one skilled commander, uh, he proposed that each commander slap each other until one yielded. Both commanders agreed to this contest, and while accounts of the legend differ, one commander either uh, yielded or was smacked unconscious. Right? They're legends. They're going to change. Um, both commanders, Theseus and the rest of the army, agreed that this was a much better way to settle disagreements in military strategy and overall any time in the military. One could because say it, that was his Theseus, his research Theseus. <laughs> what's what's you know <laughs> the, so, the startling thing about this though <laughs> is that we got to say that the Greeks did not go into you know concussion protocols once the guy had been knocked unconscious, so they had people just stumbling out onto the battlefield completely concussed. <laughs> I they mean, put them in the back of their fl- flanks uh, there, uh, so that by the time they move up and are front and center, they've already tried to, they've already recovered. Yeah. And see, this is also what they didn't know. Achilles died of CTE. Technically, <laughs> his brain was so, you know, swole up, but really they attributed it to the fact that he had his ankle cut open. But I mean, really, he was just so concussed that he, he just couldn't function anymore. Well, I think that was why he didn't want to protect his one vital, his, his one, you know, vulnerable spot. He, uh-huh. he, he didn't think about it because his brain was so scattered from all the slap fighting i mean he was just so strong they had to make up a story to be like i don't know i don't see any obvious wounds on him and somebody nicked him on the heel here but he just fell over i don't know what the <laughs> hell's happening it's like Shawn michaels in the middle of the match with owen he just you oh, know, took oh, a dive to the mat and didn't move Oof. oh my god my cat is actually showing up in my waveform i'm actually seeing her <laughs> scream so i apologize for any editing that has to happen because she's <laughs> I'm seeing it on my stuff. Ay, ay, ay. That's all right. Uh, if any are in there, then people can hear it. You've already prefaced it, so it's yeah. perfectly fine. It'll it'll be part of the joke for the episode. You can hear her having a conniption in the background from time to time. <laughs> hey! What are you doing in there? I want to join! 
Does um, your, so when I had a cat before, if I would try to shut her out the door, she would not only whine outside the door, but I'd see her little paw come underneath the door. She's pawing the door. She's oh, she doing the, the let. She's doing the let me in slap as well, gotcha. which is also happening. It just it <laughs> hadn't showed up yet, but I was quiet enough that all of a sudden I just see this little pop in the waveform from her screaming in the background. So Be, like I tried to get a moment's peace going to the washroom, and I would just see this paw coming under the door. <laughs> <laughs> let me like, in. What are you trying to do? Well, like honestly, okay, I want to I want to ask a question about that. What does the cat think it's trying to accomplish by sticking its paw under that door? They, that it's, it's going to try and open it? Well. We, like, we play with the cat that way. So, I mean, oh, we'll, we'll sit okay. and drop things in. So, it, it's probably just a, they play with each other under doors as well. Oh, they like okay. to bap at each other from under things. So, that is largely what I've seen as far as behavioral. Uh, yeah. No, I don't think that uh, I have seen cats try to open doors that way, though, and effectively do so uh, if it's not completely really? latched. Yes. Lena has gotten into our closet where we keep all of their food by laying down and selecting the door. She's smart. <laughs> she opens our cabinets constantly. We're going to have to get the child proof locks because she just walks over and. Just opens the cabinets up and tries to get in. Ooh, snacks. Mm, (laughs) Everything's in the closet that we can lock. (laughs) Okay, so... (laughs) Circling it back here. yes. No, you're fine, you're fine. So, Theseus, in response to this success, mandated slap fighting as the best way to settle arguments within his army. And thus, according to legend, the sport of slap fighting began as a way to settle an argument. Is that for true? I was no. about to call it good, no, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, the legend is bullshit. Okay. Well, it's a good it's a well concocted version, bullshit. Yes. My version of the legend is bullshit. A legend the, there is a legend that goes that Theseus had invented boxing okay. in this way. Um, but the source did not specify the story as leading to the creation of boxing. Okay. Which makes sense. People have been punching each other since they learned that you can make a fist. Yes. So and non, but, as you've talked about, non-lethal forms of competition are probably preferable, particularly in military sort of institutions. Yes. But still, while this legend might be incorrect, this cultural way of settling disagreements still manifested itself within Greece. You know, it, it was an easy way to settle arguments. And instead of being black and bruised all over, you're only getting your face fucked up. So. <laughs> Often it's Take an improvement. Well. Yeah, exactly. You didn't need those teeth anyway. They were rotting out of your face. So use a phone book and you don't, you know, get black and blue all over either. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> went to the Ike Turner playbook harder than I did. Okay. Damn. Ooh, I got whiplash from that turn. Uh, so this cultural way of settling disagreements did not spread outside of Greece proper. Uh, no evidence of the sport was practiced even in the Greek colonies. So if you know that, if you recall history, Greeks didn't just stay within their <laughs> little region. What? I, what? Just, I just like the phrasing of it. If you recall history. I, if you recall history. I'm not know, concussed, so usually I do. Exactly, because you haven't been in a slap fight. Mm-hmm. So Greek, the Greek people settled a lot, uh, pretty much most of the Mediterranean, like in, in like small colonies throughout we didn't we there hasn't been any sort of evidence found that the sport was practiced outside of the region of Greece, even though Greek people settled like parts of Italy, uh, North Africa, the Black Sea, parts of the Levant. They only found uh, evidence of slap fighting through um, some, you know, tattered like half remains of papers or like pottery and stuff in the region of Greece proper. Plus, they were um, big fun. They were fan. Yeah. They were fans of oral history. I mean, it was a storytelling went mostly person to person. Yeah, yeah, you don't really have the means to sit and dictate everything to paper. Well, and your memory exactly. is probably a little fuzzy for constantly being slapped. <laughs> that could be why. <laughs> could be why it didn't spread beyond just the region of Greece. Well, it did eventually spread beyond the region of Greece to the Romans. Since they who, stole everything. Exactly. Um, it was only after the region was conquered by the Romans around 100 BC did this practice move out of the region of Greece. The Roman military adopted many Greek military traditions, so it was obvious that Rome would adopt slap fighting as a way to settle disagreements. Or boxing, as we've talked about. <laughs> or boxing. <laughs> this is a continuation well, of, the, of the same lie. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a different lie. Okay, all right. Yeah. 
The only okay. sport that I can find evidence of uh, a concrete evidence of spreading into Rome from Greece was the Greek sport of I'm going to butcher it because I never saw a correct pronunciation of it, but Pancration or Pancration? Uh, Pancration. Pancration? Mm -hmm. Oh, I was wrong on both counts. So good um, with sausage and eggs. Love some oh, Pancration yeah. in the morning. A little middle maple syrup, some butter. Mm. Crispy Pancrations. So, no, you're thinking of penetration. <laughs> Especially without the hand jobs. Uh, so, uh, so pan it the way he is and Pancration is something similar to mixed martial arts, which mar martial arts, which uh, use boxing and wrestling techniques, but also included things like chokeholds and kicking. So, so yes, you're right. It didn't spread outside the region of Greece. Three down, it, three good. Yeah, <laughs> but it still continued to remain popular in Greece in the region of Greece during the Byzantine Empire. So it spread through antiquity all the way through to the medieval era. Uh, while historians focus on the more bloodthirsty sport of chariot racing, and all my Byzantine history nerds out there know plenty of examples that prove how violent that sport was, like, for example, the Nikita riots of uh, 532 AD, in which there was a disagreement between, if I recall correctly, the blue, or no, the purple team and the green team uh, for the chariot racing, and it, evolved, it, it devolved into a full riot. So, where I think several, like tens of thousands of people died, and the uh, emperor, Justinian, had to flee. He almost fled the city, but his wife uh, made a mistake. Yes. No. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that this is the truth. I'm going to call, first of all, is it bullshit? I'm going to assume it's not. No, but this is okay. a real thing this that happened. I was going to say, so, this is all so, extemporaneous. Well, you well, can no, see. The, the, well, right. But I, the reason why is like... Um, then Babylon 5 must have stolen part of this because the purple and green and the, the feud yeah. between. Yeah, this is like mm -hmm. a Babylon 5 episode that had oh. a little bit of this lore happening. Okay. So they must have been like referencing this. That's what I was going to say. Is Almost certain. Well, uh, 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 actually, yeah, pretty much because, yeah. Well, I, I said I said the Byzantine <laughs> history nerds out there know that. But no, this is a true thing that did happen in the Kita riots. And my sci fi um, nerds. Yeah. And that was it. They weren't like. The, the teams were named after colors, if I recall correctly. I could be wrong on the specific color. Go figure. Yeah, but they were just, they were colors because that was pretty much how they decorated. They weren't like, I don't know, the Athen Lions or something or anything like that. It was just, they, that was the Ooh. like the team's name. You, Nikita Lions? The Athens Dem Democrats? Yeah, yes, exactly. I, I I love the Nikita Lions, that spread-legged, you know, pinning combination that we talked about previously. You know, I actually, I think some subconscious part of me came up with the lions just to make that just connection. Just because of, yeah, yeah, our, our link yeah. to Nikita, yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of just wax poetic about how Byzantine historians kind of just focus on this blood sport instead of focusing on the more uh, traditional slap fighting that occurred, that still remained. Um yeah, we don't need to really touch upon that. Basically, so, all this is fake, and it was just, you know, <laughs> two people in Youngstown, Ohio, who got in a fight <laughs> in front of the Dollar General in 1973. <laughs> and that is really the, the history of slap fight. No, it doesn't. It didn't start in Youngstown, Ohio in it's 1973. It's my honey ham. You can't take it. Whap. <laughs> <laughs> that someone, some bystander was like, I can make a sport of this. I like it. it's Ohio. I immediately went into a Dave Chappelle bit. Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> That's doo-doo, baby. All right. Sorry. So Continue. No, you're fine. Uh, so I, I kind of wanted to explain a little bit why slap fighting continue to, like, stay relevant within the Byzantine Empire. So Greece was highly urbanized during the Byzantine Empire, which meant large cities where many peasants were forced into cramped living conditions. Since the police, as we understand them, did not really exist back in the Middle Ages, which I have kind of explained why, touched upon in previous episodes. They were defunded. There had to be a, there had to be a way for peasants to settle disputes without devolving to outright <laughs> murder. So it was a slap fight in front of the Dollar General. It was just in Greece. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, thus, slap fighting evolved to fill this gap. In the event that someone had an issue with someone else, whether because of a trade deal gone wrong, wages that weren't paid, a social faux pas, etc., the wronged party could bring up their case to a local magistrate. In the event that proof wasn't enough to make a case, the offended party could still challenge the other party to a slap fight. Whoever won was considered the winning party. Essentially, this was a trial by combat, 
but instead of something as bloody as full-fledged combat, it was decided by two people slapping each other. So. Did the court have to dictate terms before this started? Is like, this is how you comport yourself during the fight. Here are rules. Like the traditional duel that would follow. That meet at the tree stump. I know that there were rules that were that came with slap fighting. I mean, that there are still rules that, that you know, are prevalent to this day. But I don't know if that was something because um, it was very it was vague right. in that regard. Research I don't know if it was show something. That. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. I don't I mean, it makes sense that you could like I would probably argue no in that there already were social norms that already dictated how a fight could go. Kind of like uh, duels mm-hmm. in the uh, Enlightenment right. where you had to take 10 steps, count yeah. to three, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but that was that actually would be an interesting thing to to read on because I, I, I not I would to interject. Assume, yeah, no, no, I, that's I a good was point. mostly asking purely because you're saying if there is a court that's technically like interceding on on somebody's behalf as an arbiter to say yes, you can settle this dispute in a slap fight. As like, j- does someone from the court follow, or does is it just kind of like everybody meets in the town square? Or this is where the showdown happens, or is this just in your own time? Should you happen upon each other in the street, slap it out, and then, you know, you're fine. <laughs> Let us know of the, give us the results. We'll post it on ESPN later, and then we'll just broadcast for everybody else. No, yeah, um, it definitely it was somewhere in the middle with that. Um, mm. it, it was pretty much what I had read was that when you don't have enough to make a case to actually go to court for whatever wrongs occurred, you can still try and get some retribution by demanding a slap fight. Okay. So it's kind of informal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were still rules and everything. Like, you couldn't just say, we're going to slap it out right now. Okay. You had, you know, some sort of meeting time, um, probably at a town square or something. There are, like, because it is a cultural thing, it would vary depending on the city and, and right, sub-regions right. within Greece. But, yeah, that that was pretty much, like, the idea was that if you could, if there wasn't enough evidence or the magistrate just didn't want to make a case of it, right. John then Rick you could Four. still, yeah, exactly, then you can try and solve it on your own terms yeah just, just because we went on the tangent here but nobody actually asked this whole court thing isn't bullshit right what do you mean the whole court thing <laughs> oh <laughs> like i you, you can't well, just, so uh, well, as kind I mean, of what i was hinting at is is a judge actually adjudicating exactly. at some point to indicate that a slap fight is how this is going to be resolved was this ever an official you know sort of sanction or is it something exactly. that just uh, an informal agreement okay. amongst parties Okay, yeah, no, it was, you're right, there wasn't, it wasn't necessarily like a trial by combat in, okay. in this regard. Yeah, you you didn't go to like a local magistrate uh, in order to, to solve any of this. Um, nice cover though, sir, nice cover. I, I, was seeing you, yeah. I was giving him an opportunity to sort of lay some foundation yeah. here if there's anything further, but. No, it was, it yeah, was no, well it, covered up and then I was just like, well, we're about to walk away from this. Oh, no, We've we have done were. a long tangent <laughs> no, on it. No, it was, it we was good. Fun. <laughs> yeah, no, this, the idea of a trial by combat in, in, in regards to like going through legal means in this, in this space. Uh, a situation that wasn't prevalent in Byzantine culture. Um, so it, it was fairly informal in that regard. Uh, the idea of trial by combat was introduced by the Normans in 1066 when they conquered England. Um, so I'm curious to see, and we'll like, again, not to get too far ahead, but I'm curious to see if there will be some working in of, you know, in the traditional duel when, you know, to, to initiate the duel, somebody goes up to somebody else with a glove and slaps them with the glove and, I challenge oh. you. I, I'm curious to see if you've tried to work this into. <laughs> Apparently, <you didn't>. no, <laughs> no. That starstruck but... smile. Yeah, that would have. No, that makes sense now that I think about it because I didn't make that connection <laughs> uh, about like duels. That would have been interesting to look into to see if that had like some sort of evolution too. Um, Part that's, two. That, that was exactly where my head went for a lie. I was like, I could tie it in with the duels and the glove slap. They'll believe it because everybody knows about the glove slap. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that. Uh, well, yeah, because that's how you initiate it. I mean, based off of my reading, I would probably say no, slap fighting did not evolve into a version of dueling because, like, at least how slap fighting is with its rules and specifications and all that stuff, like, it's not something that you can just walk up to someone and do, right? So, like, this inclusion of a slap to initiate a duel would feel like it just comes from somewhere else because, like, that is almost just like out of the blue i mean yeah it's not necessarily out of out of nowhere 
But I have like, seen some out of the blue, like in a bar sometimes, just, <laughs> what are you doing talking to my man? Slap. Well, yeah, but that's not like <laughs> slap fighting in a way. They're not standing opposite each other and they take turns slapping each other. That's just a fight. See, Dollar General, <laughs> 1973, Youngtown, Ohio. <laughs> so we're going to go into the modern times now. The Normans. For those, 1973, well, Youngtown, Ohio. Close. Okay. Yeah, so. Norman. No, it actually was Dayton, Ohio. Sorry. Ooh, okay, yes. I forget. Youngtown, birthplace of anal sex. Yes. Uh, so, for those history buffs, early, very early Russian culture was greatly influenced by the Greeks. They got the Cyrillic alphabet, which was based off the Greek al- alphabet, 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 and the alphabet, Greek... You know where that came from. <laughs> I've had a little too many alphabets. Um, <laughs> so... The Greek alphabet and then also the Eastern Orthodox Church. A slap, fight, slap fighting in Russia, also known as Platovani, was thought to have originated concurrently with the Christianization of the Russian peoples in the 13th century. And it spread faster. Why did I write this? I knew I was going to regret saying this. And it spread faster than a mail order bride could spread her legs, much to the consternation of the missionaries preaching about Jesus. <laughs> Not missionary style. No. No. Um, so within a, within a generation, slap fighting became prevalent within all of Russian culture. To show how intense this custom was at the time, according to one source that I could not verify, mm. in part because Wikipedia did not verify the source, and yeah. I will say that this source is not a lie. Okay. Just, I'm just it's putting just it out verified. there. It's just not verified. Okay. It's just not verified, which is why I'm citing that. Uh, a high-ranking Orthodox priest in 1274 created a rule that those who did participate uh, but did not sing a prayer or hymn at the burial of someone who died during an event was expulsed from Christianity. Yeah, I said lie? burial wrong. I just said it was true. No, sorry. The Within a century, it became pervasive through all of Russian society. Oh, that was a jump. Uh, uh, yeah, that was a jump. <laughs> uh, no, it was... Uh, it, it it didn't start. It didn't start that... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it didn't spread that quickly. Like a mail order... <laughs> Brian. Um, so every yeah. paragraph basically that you said has been a lie at this point. We'll we'll lead in well, I'll there's a reason and I'll okay. explain why. All right, the there's end. a reason for yeah. the season. How many lies do we have yeah. so far? Are we do we that's get four, four or five? I think. Uh, no, I think it's five. I think that's really oh, okay. I think that's five. Yeah, you got you have one more. Okay. Yeah. One more type of lie. Uh yeah. so what you're saying what I'm hearing from you, Michael, is that Dollar General <laughs> Young Town, <laughs> Ohio, 1973. It did, it did not start in Dayton or, no. in Dayton or Youngtown, <laughs> oh, Ohio. I don't, I don't think it was 73. I think it was the summer of 69. Oh, my goodness. So it's in that, Cleveland. It, oh, goodness. Yeah. Um, plots of, uh, so that paragraph was a lie. It, slap fighting was thought to start in <laughs> Russia everyone after. before it. <laughs> yes. Uh, and also, Platovani <laughs> is not a Russian word, nor does it mean slap fighting. It is actually a Slovak word for payment. Which, it's also a lovely summer spot to visit. Yes. Plato Vallarta. So, <laughs> find a dollar every time I heard someone call it that. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yes. Yeah. So okay. it, it was it, 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 it. And the sport that I was talking about in the source was just. Uh, I think it was boxing of some sort. Okay. So boxing. So nobody also slap. <laughs> Manny, there's no slap fighting happening in the 13th century. It did. It did happen in Russia, but just after the 13th century, and it took probably longer to spread throughout Russia than a mail okay. order bride spreads. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yes, exactly. Just what happens when uh, you find somebody getting salty with one of your goats? <laughs> now they got the clap. Pa-pow. Um. So. So in the in the Enlightenment era, Russian rulers never really supported the sport, um, but they also never really opposed the because <laughs> it never what? happened. Yeah, because it doesn't exist. I can't oppose something that doesn't happen. All right, all right, fine, fine. Yes, I'm gonna still read this off, but just okay. replace it with a type of boxing Wikipedia calls Russian boxing capoeira. No, not even that intense. Well, actually, it, it was. Uh, I mean, that's South American, but you know, I, I, yeah, yeah. I did read a little bit into the Russian boxing, and it actually is like boxing, like one on one, but somehow ado- uh, uh, um, adopted or adapted 
to be team fighting, but it's still boxing. So it's not like a brawl or like a mob fighting, but it was like teams it's the boxing first each tag other. team. Oh, match. like a tag. Yeah, I was just gonna say like a of three sorts. on three tag team match. Yeah, okay. Australian so rules tag match. I'll just replace all the lie part. This was the sixth lie, so you guys did get all the lies. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, well Russian done, rulers never supported the sport during this period, they also never opposed the fighting. In fact, Russian boyars, or upper nobility, would frequently host boxing events as max mass entertainment and would invite the best fighters in their land to compete. These events often took a place around uh, took place around the holidays. It took a place. Took a, it took a place <laughs> around the holidays. Hey. Um, so it would take place around the holidays and would draw in large crowds. In winter, fights these fights would even take place on ice, which I found to be very interesting, and it is true. Um, I mean, honestly, it's Russia, so most things were covered in ice anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, where else are we going to fight? Man, if you're playing hockey, you got to scrap every now and then. That was Canada. In um, Russia. No, I'm just imagining the Russian nobility sloughing off their dainty white gloves and pulling their shirts over their heads. Oh, they never fought. They got the peasants to fight. But anyway. Back to our Black uh, Sabbath, apparently. Exactly. Yes. Uh, during a normal event, young children would compete first, moving up in age until the aged and experienced boxers would go last. As time went on, several well-known Russian rulers weighed in on these events. Peter the Great was thought to have organized a few of his own boxing matches in order to show the ability of the Russian people. His words. Um, more enlightened, enlightened rulers uh, did not appreciate the violence inherent in the sport. And so in 1832, Nicholas I, which, if I recall correctly, was the grandfather of a previous episode that we had done. Uh, Nicholas the Exploded. Yes. Um, no, Alexander the Second. Alexander the Exploded, or Third. I can't I, remember. I anyway, uh, Nicholas the First of Russia banned boxing completely in 1832. And, again, this is where I would end this part of the section with, and thus slap fighting would remain in obscurity until the advent of the internet. Videos of slap fights gone viral on platforms like YouTube and Instagram and organizations like Dana White's Power Slap Dana. have emerged to organize and promote the sport. Dana? 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 Dana. Is Dana. Dana. Yes. You said okay. Dana. The, the truth Dana. is out there. Yeah, <laughs> the truth is out there. I'm actually watching um, the X-Files presently. Uh, I got <laughs> Melissa to, to sit with me, so we started back. We're halfway through the second season now. So, nice. Do you ever turn to her and go, you know, he's not the only fox in this room? <laughs> Melissa really hit me. I, I just, I guess... I, Maybe this is a personal thing. She, she's like, you know, David Duchovny is a really horrible actor, but from the way that this is written, you know, it works for him. But has she, <laughs> has she never seen Californication? He's pretty good in that. She... You know what's funny? I was also <laughs> chuckling about like the through the through line of the X Files of him being a pervert because they constantly show him looking at like girly mags. He has like bikini ma uh, bikini calendars. He hangs up. Constantly make jokes about, you know, it's I missed it because my subscription to like Skin Mag came in. And I was just like, this whole time, the creators of this show, yeah, just sitting around, uh, Chris Carter's like, yeah, I know you're a pervert. So we're just going to write this into every single show. So the sex love, addiction's real. I Truth's love out there. things like the X Files and like the, the Highlander TV series. The X Men movies and stuff. I love all that stuff that's like filmed in Vancouver and heavily mm. utilizes Vancouver stuff because you can always like because they're always scouting different areas to shoot in, right? Yeah. So you don't just get the big obvious, oh, that's Vancouver, right? You don't get the the touristy stuff. You get the little right. side streets that I'm like, hey, that's like two blocks down the road from my house. What the I'm like that was great. I was also pointing out like the day players where it's very like they're shooting and it's supposed to be Pennsylvania, and this person's very obviously got like a Canadian yeah. accent. You're like. <laughs> Easy. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> not to derail entirely, but uh, back no, to Dana. Good. And it's the good. Back to Dana. Interesting, so, before we get too far afield, though, <laughs> as I, I'm not, no, I'm not commandeering your show. But funnily enough, interesting fact, in professional wrestling, for years and years and years, closed hand punches was... It, it's illegal to do in a in a wrestling match for professional wrestling. Huh. So you were only allowed to do an open hand slap. 
So the slap was actually just kind of, or an, a, you know, what we call it like a loosey goosey sausage yeah. hand punch. You couldn't close your fist and hit somebody. You had to have an open hand. So slapping was sense. actually routinely included in professional wrestling. Huh. So it was around, just not in something where it's stand and slap each other. Though that's more mm-hmm. of a modern wrestling trope these days as well. But they oh, just, no. <laughs> and just on a note of wrestling there, the Iron Sheik. You know, is now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, Iron Sheik's gone today. Rest in peace and pepperonis, you salty bitch. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I only figured because people were retweeting his tweets from like a long time ago. Oh, he was just right up until yesterday. I think his last tweet alive was fuck the forest fires. Yep. That's it. So. There's a uh, Jim Cornette tells a very famous story. It's his Iron Sheik story where he talks about that uh, Sheiky was getting drunk at a bar one evening. He left his stool for a moment to go, you know, drain the snake, as it were. And when he came back, there was a woman who had sat down in his stool and, uh, you know, in his stool. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I Terrible was just going to I was, I was going to let you go. It's I true. Wasn't say I'm anything. sure he probably did defecate on the chair, but no, she sat on his stool. <laughs> so he came back and in the, his inimitable fashion is the, why did you take Sheik's chair? This is Sheik's chair. You must get up. I must sit down. And she refused to leave the stool. So like, well, what did you do? I like, so I gave her the short arm clothesline and knocked her off the stool. Is it what the cunt? <laughs> <laughs> And that so it's it's such a famed story, particularly with Cornette and his wife. He got a t shirt printed for her that says Vatakant on it <laughs> just to commemorate Sheik and his standard delivery. But yes, a, a genuine icon of the industry and uh, one of the greater known Iranian individuals who actually uh, had uh, w- was in the protective service of the, the Shah for a while, and an Olympian. He, Very interesting. He was, he, he he was, was good, an Olympian. He mm-hmm. was good friends with the Shah yes. um, before he had to flee. Um, you know, when you're protecting him, he's one of the bodyguards. But yes, well, he yeah. was, a, a, I think he was a silver or a bronze medalist. Uh, in one of the, yeah, no, he's a, he's a legit uh, um, amateur wrestler. And we're oh, we're talking the, the uh, Paul Iron Bear of Sheik, bad news not, correct? Not the Sheik. We're, okay, yes. okay, okay. Because that, yeah, I was like, he he was Iraqi, and he also knew Saddam Hussein, and he actually started a wrestling thing. Because I learned this uh, in a recent podcast that I had uh, listened to about uh, Vince McMahon. Yeah, I, I, I listened yeah. to yeah. all six parts of many, that. Many, 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 many hours of you poor, great, poor soul. Oh, it was a, it was super interesting learning all this cool uh, re- wrestling history. The Von which Eric stuff I was think, really entertaining. I think Shane should do some some episodes on on ru- uh, Russian on Russians, on wrestling. Yes. So what you're wrestling. saying is it's good shit, pal. Yeah, exactly. Okay, brother. Um, so I'm going to talk about Dana White and the really bad decisions that he has made. Oh yeah, uh, this isn't so, part two. This is still this part. Yeah, it's okay. a, it's very short. Oh, I'm excited. I, I'm yeah, sorry. I thought you were wrapping up, but I'm no, ready. No, no, Let's no, no. I thought the cream about it. Rises and, to the top, brother. I thought about yeah. ending it here until you were like, "What? Am I going to hear anything about Dana?" And I'm like, "All right, I guess oh, I'll add yeah, a little bit I extra." Mean, you it's don't fine. have to, but I'm, oh, I'm no, intrigued. No, I'm, yeah, please I'm give excited. me the give me the Dana. So, so slap fighting is technically already in the mainstream. Mm-hmm. I'll just I'll just drop that bombshell now. Yes, we all on know the, Young Ten Ohio, 1973. 1973. That's right. No, so on the powerhouse channel TBS, the super station, were, exactly six oh five, baby. People were treated to the show Power Slap Road to the Title earlier this year, 2023, and let me tell you, the show blows its load almost immediately, and it does. Let me quote the well, it's opening. It's got a lot of hand jobs in it. <laughs> it is a slap pipe. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, there's no, there's no hand jobs in it because you can't. Every you can't one close of them your, is a hand job. That's how the slap You can't close your hand. I mean, whoever it's gotta falls be an open hand slap. is the one who I, did I, the hand job. They got some meaty I, palms, my friend. <laughs> I think I understand. Job. Beefy. I think I understand now why Doc does not like hand jobs. 
Because the only thing you can do in a slap fight is have an open hand. And if he's saying that there's a lot of hand jobs, I'm thinking that they never learned how to close their hands whenever he was receiving one. And that doesn't sound like it would be very enjoyable. Just karate choppy, choppy, just, choppy pee pee. Kia, kia. Oh, now I'm thinking Miss Piggy giving a hand job. That's... <laughs> I mean, Kermit always wanted that, but he probably never got it. Uh, <laughs> Pork and uh, so, Miss Piggy. <laughs> the Kermit T. Frog story. His poor tadpole. Oh, God. It ain't easy uh, being green. It, it definitely ain't easy being green. Why are so, there so many porks giving hand jobs? <laughs> while I'm so far away. <laughs> so, going from there to another load blowing uh, act, uh, I'm going to quote the opening of Times article on the show. Quote, during the opening scene of Power Slap Road to the title, striker Chris Thomas steps on into a square and calls right three. He's indicating to the official that on the count of three, he will smack his opponent, 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 Chris Kennedy, with all the velocity and power available to him in his right hand. Kennedy, meanwhile, holds his hands behind his back, clutching a sort of stick to ensure that he won't raise his hands to defend himself from the assault. That's right, you get two for flinching. Exactly. One, well, no, I actually, I don't know how the point structure works. So the only thing I've heard is you get penalized. In the, in the videos that I've watched, you, get to, you have two penalties before you're out. And flinching is a penalty. Slapping in, not in the uh, allowed area is, is also a penalty and that sort of thing. So one, two, smack. The chalk that Thomas had put on his hand before the blow flies off Kennedy's face as Kennedy falls to the mat. The force sends Kennedy careening so fast, the two men standing behind him, whose job is to catch him before his head bounces off the mat. And didn't Jackie seem goes to crying, make it. crawling back to the back of the car. No, no, no. Thomas is out. No, I was uh, talking yeah. about oh. Kennedy getting his head blown. Oh, oh, oh God. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> they didn't seem to make it on time. The ref calls the fight immediately. Um, and then the author kind of like kind of mused a little bit. Is it a fight if by rule a combatant can't defend himself? You know, some... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Before continuing on, quote, the ref summons a doctor. Kennedy's eyes appear to be rolling up to the back of his head. Uh, and I also did watch of, of the video, the opening uh, salvo of this match, and it is, it is not something that I wanted to show people. I almost thought about we watched that one just to watch so you guys can watch someone almost die in real time, the soul leave his body. Um, but it actually was not enjoyable at all. It looked very, it was very painful to watch. I really want like to see his this eyes, now. I'm not going to lie. His eyes kind of just stared forward and his arms locked up. So we kind of just like yeah. went like rigor mortis so and he just collapsed. Out. Yeah. See, I have mm -hmm. to agree with the Times author then because a lot of fighting like is about defensive tactics as well. And if you just have to stand there and take the hit, especially like what if you haven't even given your hit yet? So this is like very first salvo into it and you're practically dead. It's also There's... like, it's, oh. it's not about how tough you are either. Like the knockout mechanism can get triggered on anybody regardless of, you know, what the blow is or so, I mean, you don't even have to be incredibly strong or skilled to slap somebody and knock them out. I mean, it helps, but it yeah. could just be luck. Or if you do know exactly where to hit, like that, that would be the only kind of skill that I would argue that is like yeah. really inherent. And in mm -hmm. yeah, if you have power behind it, if you like have the muscles for it, sure. Yeah. But like, if you can time a good hit, you'll make the person drop. You yeah, just have to like well, hit the, hit, hit them in a certain way. And the, so it's much like of it a, the, luck too, the sleeper hold, yeah. the Spock sleeper hold. It's just, yeah. So, so, I mean, to Shane's point about, you know, hitting it and getting the right contact or whatever, it can be luck there, but it could also just be straight up luck of the coin toss or however, whatever it is that decides who goes first. Mm -hmm. Cause whoever goes first has a massive advantage in that they might just end the game before they even bother to get hit. Yeah, it's and like two, pugilistic tic-tac-toe. Yeah, and then, yeah. too, even if the guy survives, you know, the first blow, the guy giving the first blow uh, is uninterrupted, right? He's perfectly fine. He hasn't had anything happen to him during that very first blow. Whereas the guy that's got to come back, he gets like a few seconds to shake it off, and now he's got to deliver a hit. Surely his his coming blow is going to be somewhat affected by having just gotten smacked in the face by some giant guy, right? True. 
<laughs> his coming I, blow uh, is going to be impacted again with the again with the hands, the open hands. Hiya! Um, but I would I would argue, uh, especially based off of the videos that I had seen of more local, you know, homegrown people duking it out instead of the like big spectacle that Dana White is kind of trying to that we're getting into. <laughs> Uh, Dan- Dana, whatever, whatever, Mr. White. There is no Dana, only Dana. <laughs> but like in a lot of the more local things, people don't really like get smacked out on the first try. A lot of them do survive unless you're talking about. I did watch a couple of videos of this like big beefy Russian dude who's like this like farmer from Siberia. So we, he, he, that's all he does. But he's this like just solid muscle. And he would challenge people like during the show that I watched, people would come up and try and slap him. And he would always give the first slap or he would always let them. He would always take the first slap. Mm. Right. He would receive catch, if you will. Um, And then he would return. And that usually meant knocking the person like out. Um, So like, yes, there are some versions of that. But usually when people are like more evenly matched or if they're also trying not to knock out on the first time to try and make it more of a spectacle. Um, it, it, they do last. I did. I think the longest one that I watched was about, I think like, uh, between 10 and 20 rounds and they're there. They were looking, one was this, like, uh, this like really bleach white dude from like somewhere in the South. He even had like red hair and everything like that. I, he, he's, he's actually in power slap now, but his face was like blue like purple it was it was grody do they get um cauliflower ear or anything like that too no like- so so um you can't hit in the a ear. lot of the you can't hit in the ear and they also have padding in the ear to protect against that so it, in yeah, all the versions of the sport an eardrum you're you're done yeah exactly yeah uh and what great it would be like walking onto the field for your first day on nfl you know tr- summer camp and you blow your acl right you your your thing would be over your whole career so they like all the versions all the iterations of the sport that i saw mandated uh cotton in the ears and mouth guards probably because you don't want to you know bite your tongue off or you know break your teeth or anything like that because the idea is that you're supposed to come back to slap again and it's hard to do that when you now can't hear in one ear and you lost half your teeth so, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Idiots, honestly. Like, <laughs> I, uh, it's a, it's a spectacle. It's a spectacle. And people um, will do anything at the promise of getting a little notoriety or some money, and yeah, yeah. So I'm just gonna finish the quote out because it's only a couple more Go sentences. Uh, power slap producers replay the strike in slow motion from three different angles. You can see Kennedy's skin and. Thus, picture his brain quaking. So you see the ripples. Like, like the Homer Simpson punch during the when he became a boxer for a while, and it's like ripple, ripple, ripple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or when they did um, the fat test. Yes, <laughs> that's one the one I was thinking. He times it for a good whole minute. Ooh, yeah. look at um, it go! <laughs> that flubber fly. So Kennedy does come too, right? They don't just cart him off. He does wake oh, up. Oh well, at least everybody um, got to finish. Uh. But he can't recall his whereabouts. An official told him he got knocked out, and he responded with, was I fighting? So <laughs> completely just resetted. Doesn't remember. He didn't even remember that he was there to fight. Yep. Somebody blow so, on his cartridge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cockroach commander. That's right. well, some cockroaches come out of his ears. Um, I had originally plan- planned on showing you that opening scene to you guys, but it was just too much even for me. Uh who had watched a couple dozen slap fights in preparation for this episode. Uh, It was just too damn painful. Uh, Like people watch a train wreck for the spectacle, but most will start to turn away when you start seeing people thrown from the wreckage. Um, And that's pretty much how I viewed it. Like, yeah, the, the videos I'd watch in preparation, they were kind of fun. Like watching a person go, Oh, you know, like get slapped a little bit, a little slow motion, but then they're fine. They shake it off and they're like, put the ear, uh, the cotton piece back in their ear and then go at it again. That that's funny because it's just like it's slapstick, right? But watching this guy just like intended. exactly watching this guy just like the soul leave his body and just collapse like he 
was dead. It was it was. Yeah, but he's still volunteering was, for that, so it's a little oh, different I, than the train uh, wreck well, analogy. Uh, uh, what do you mean there? <laughs> Well, you know, and I think there's a point. So we've talked about this previously, I think, in prior circumstances, like the uh, the spiked T slap that, (laughs) you know, was constantly discussed on the show or uh, Mm -hmm. my avowed love of watching people get tased. And I think that the cathartic aspect of that is that you see someone who's behaving poorly, who gets a degree of sort of karmic come up and yes and exactly. so you know you feel like it's a warranted show of aggression where this is again to your point earlier this isn't an athletic contest where two people are displaying a measure of skill and they're interlocked in combat and you can appreciate sort of the the skill like the one of the things i love about mma in particular is individuals one who are versed in jujitsu and wrestling and then your other fighting styles because it really is a science to figure out like you're picking your spots trying to find a weakness that you can exploit in order to win the contest this is just two people standing there with that requires no skill like you said this could happen in any bar from here portland maine to portland oregon just Mm -hmm. let people stand and slap each other you could do this with five-year-olds and it would probably still be the same general principle and that, to me, kind of smocks of bad taste. And, uh, you know, yeah. and it's exploitative if you want to. Like, it's there's a lot of aspects here that are unfortunate. So, yeah, I, I do concur with your perspective there. It's, you're, you're just kind of walking. It's basically a demolition derby with human beings. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, because, like, even That's a good for... Point. Yeah, yeah, because even with uh, uh, d- d- demolition derbies, you're watching those cars, like, get destroyed. And that is... In in itself cathartic too yes. because like it, it, you sat in rush hour enough times you're like come on I just want this car yeah. and you should, uh, just get smashed and you're not thinking of but the like, guy driving the car exactly. or the people who paid the money to try to throw the thing into the derby in the hopes of winning and those mm-hmm. are people again the car's well being is not going to negatively impact the person who bought it Dana yeah. White <laughs> is not having problems unless it's his wife slapping him as we've documented previously but he's making a hell of a lot more money than these fools that are being you know exploited to be thrown on the show so it's a a little rough yeah you're right about the exploitative nature of it they really should rebrand the entire slap fighting thing you know since we're talking about exploitative but doing it for money and just to get viewers and stuff instead of (laughs) only fans have it be like only hands (laughs) well if it's anything like this show it won't take off um (laughs) it won't take off it won't get off (laughs) Well done. Um, yes. So the timing of the show was pretty bad because the announcement of the sport and its subsequent second time well done. Uh, TV show um, aired around the same time as Buffalo Bill safety DeMar Hamlin, if you recall that from the beginning of this year. OK, so for those not aware, Buffalo Bill safety DeMar Hamlin suffered a full body seizure. After getting hit right. during the football game, right at right around the beginning of the year. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I one, <laughs> I did not think of the football or the American football team, the Buffalo Bills. I thought that was this person's full moniker was Buffalo oh. Bill Demar Hamlin, and it's I'm like, he did it so quickly. I was like, ran- who the yeah. fuck is Buffalo Bill Demar Hamlin? <laughs> is this like the Tiger King that I didn't hear of? Because <laughs> I'm like, is some weird you know gentleman in the outback who's wrestling alligators on no, film? I, thought, I like, thought the same thing for a second because he was going, he's okay, using it all, all right. in one go. Now but I then I was you. like, oh, okay, no, I remember this. So it took okay. me a second too. Yes, now You're I'm with alone. you. But yeah, for a moment there, I was very nonplussed. <laughs> Yeah, no. So, Demar Hamlin, okay, of the of Buffalo, the Buffalo Bills. Bills, yes, yes. The safety for the Buffalo Bills suffered a full body <laughs> seizure after getting hit during a football game uh, right around the beginning of the year. Including the term "safety," I'd completely forgotten too. So now I was like, "That's the weirdest name a human being's ever had." <laughs> I'm Buffalo Bill Safety Demar Hamlin. I will tell you what. <laughs> You best Reminds be me of careful the, uh, if you take your rocket out of your pocket, because you might get hung up. Reminds me of the Key and Peele skit with the uh, with the football team, like Buffalo Bills after Demar Hamlin, East Eastern University. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, those are but, some of my favorite bad lip readings, by the way. If you watch the NFL bad lip reading, is oh. they do the 
players introducing themselves, but they are some of the most ridiculous. Of Charuful Trufflefoot. <laughs> <laughs> Gerb Jahubli. It's like mammoth, mammoth boobs. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yet there, I'll share some of those with you. They're delightful. Okay, that sounds fantastic. Um, yeah. So he was carted off the field in an ambulance, uh, and the incident reignited the yearly conversation that we always have about CTE, yes. chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Encep. That one. You were that nearly thing. there. You were so close. Yes. Yes. So, making an announcement about people slapping the souls out of each other was cursed coming right out of the gate with that. And then also, in November of 2021, Polish slap fighter Artur Walziak Close. Suffered yep. a brain bleed during a match and died of multiple organ failure. Wow. Yes. So, now, Diana... Dana, <laughs> Mr. White, Dirty Diana, Dirty Diagona, <laughs> Diana. I'm, have, I am I'm Diana. having a brain bleed here. Hello, okay. Diana White. I'm here to talk to you about the slap fight. God, I put his name in too many times. All right. He addressed those naysayers of this brand new sport in a manner I assume is consistent with any other time he addressed his haters. Um, he called them all morons and claimed the sport is safer than, safer than boxing. He argued that boxers take hundreds of hits per match, while slap fighters take between three to five. Yes, but a boxer can fucking dodge, you hapless twat. <laughs> and also, they're not taking hundred of hit, hundreds of hits to the head. <laughs> I have not seen a single... I, I've not heard of a single boxing match where someone was just getting wailed on in their head and they weren't like stop he's already dead like they don't they take hundreds of hits probably yeah sure but most of them are on their arms because they're blocking well, it's hard to and even then that's hundreds that's probably more than anyone would get hit mm -hmm. it's hard to argue like, safety as well when you're like months out of a guy dying from a brain bleed from the event right like kind of yeah. hard to argue oh it's perfectly safe ignore this body Oh, yeah. Uh, Paid no yeah. attention to the man behind the hospital gown. But it mm -hmm. also goes to show, like, the uh, mental status of those that continue to participate in said event. Because if I saw one of my colleagues die of a brain bleed as a result of the event, you know, then I might reevaluate my career choice. Well, especially like if they've already been a part of this culture, because it has been around for quite a few years. As an, Since it's only Greece. recently got or 1973. <laughs> yes, Young Town. Um, so they've are this they've already made this their lifestyle, and then also a lot of people are like, well, it won't happen to me. I mean, it's 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 why like you know you see a bunch, and I think this is a perfect analogy. You see people that still smoke cigarettes even after they've seen like their loved ones probably get cancer or something like that because they either don't care or it, they just don't think it'll happen to them. Just for the I know taste plenty of, of it. people that are like that. Yeah, it's like it's it's like yeah, you can go into you know addictive nature and stuff like that, sure. But like people will find ways to rationalize their way out of anything if they enjoy doing what it is, whatever it is is dangerous for their health, or they enjoy making money, or that too. Which Dana um, wants to get more than he got with the UFC, and when you're the 100% owner and creator and facilitator operator, you're going to get a little bit more of the pie. Mm -hmm. It's just unfortunate. Yeah. So, you know, he did mention safety regulations, and I feel like I can touch upon them. I already did a little bit before, um, but according to Power Slap co-owner Hunter Campbell, 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 yeah. Campbell. Why can't I pronounce names today? It's okay. I pronounce like the, the Polish guy's name perfectly fine, but I can't pronounce a fucking soup guy's name. I mean, name. let's not get too I'm far. A, uh, fair, fair. I'm assuming I'm pronouncing his name right. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um, contestants must wear earplugs, like I said, and mouth guards, uh, and require at least one catcher, uh, and penalized con uh, conduct like hitting the eyes or mouth. Penalized, whatever. I like saying penalized. I wasn't giving you... I was just thinking... Oh, you sighed. <laughs> I no, you were... <laughs> I was thinking because... So... When I played football, I had a, an unfortunate incident where my helmet, my uh, face mask, got entangled in one of my uh, teammates' shoulder pad. 
Ooh. And he was so mad at the fact that we got caught up in the middle of a play. And this was during practice. This isn't even during a game that once we finally separated, I was turning around to see if he was okay. And he clocked me. He punched me in the head. I was wearing a helmet that has <laughs> support around to ensure that it doesn't impact or things like that. And I still went down. It's like yeah. you get caught broadside when you're not able to protect yourself or you're not expecting that you're going to get this full impact. And I'm going, I was wearing a helmet. And I still went down. It didn't knock me out, but it certainly jarred me enough that I wasn't anticipating, you know, regaining my feet immediately. And I'm like, yeah, it's just silly to that. You're like, well, you know, they have cotton in their ear. That's not going to do anything, my friend. Also, I'm afraid. It, like, it's yeah. also like there's no I don't at least it doesn't appear like there are regulations for like qualifying a person for to be a catcher, as an example, because uh. some of the some of the you know, quote unquote, like fighters or slappers or whatever you call them. I've seen, they're like some big boys, right? Uh -huh. Like, you know, 400, 420 pounds. And then I see their catcher and the guy weighs like a buck 30. Yeah. And I'm like, he's not catching like, shit. But also. You're going to be hurt more when that guy goes down than the guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to quote the famous Big Bubba Rogers here, AA, the big boss man is like, Jimmy, you fell so fast. <laughs> like sometimes you just don't. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. retell the story because we don't, I'm not going to just quote every Jim Cornette story <laughs> on here, but yeah, it's sometimes you're not anticipating where the person's actually going to land and you'll just miss them completely because the lights were in your eyes or you weren't prepared for the cat. Like, yeah. Or you're like, I or, weigh or he 135 pounds and this guy's 420. <laughs> Let me step outside. <laughs> like it's all yeah. fun and games nope. to be, to say you're the catcher until you got to actually catch. And then you're like, I reevaluate. Yeah, it's like being He's a buck thirty hatless. and spotting a guy who's doing a five hundred pound bent press, and you're like, "Yeah, I can do this." Yeah, sure, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. He's pushing up. I just have to hold it. Yeah, it's my. Yeah, that makes sense. I was trying to like do a max squat uh, when I was maybe fifteen or sixteen, like doing a leg press, and I think I had eight hundred pounds on the leg press, and my oh, dad God. was trying to get people to come over and spot me, and everybody's like. Nope. <laughs> like, if he's dumb enough to do that, I was like, oh, it's fine, I can do it. But yeah, trying to convince people that I'm going to be able to, to get 800 pounds off my body is like, mm, no. So, yeah, I, I'm, it's not shocking. Mm -hmm. The world's worst humble brag. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well done, sir, 800 pounds. I, I, yeah, that's, I'm all legs. I have absolutely nothing in the way of upper body strength. So it's all the, it's all the walking and all that. It's yeah. just carrying my ego. It's yeah, my back and my <laughs> legs. Have heavy, to, yes, heavy as the head. As the crown. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so obviously, Power Slap Road to the Title did not get the viewers it needed to crash headlong into the mainstream. Yeah, it's just because each, TBS didn't support it properly. Well, <laughs> each episode averaged uh, about three hundred and nine thousand viewers, <gasps> despite following the much popular, the more popular show AEW Wrestling which averages about three times as many viewers per episode. As we learned about, so, you know, between eight well, and 900,000. This was also mm -hmm. before UFC and WWE combined forces now. Yes. Now we could have, like, Thursday night slapdown. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, 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 no. They just repurposed SmackDown. I, and just, well, that's just... initially what I was going to say, but then I was like, ah, Well, slapdown. we're bleeding I companies guess it depends here. On... <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it matters how much power Vince McMahon still has because he's back. He is back. As far as I'm aware. Yes, yeah. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Him and his um, maniacal mustache. Oh, God. Man, oh, yeah. yeah he legend. grew a pedo stash of sorts, oh, right? It's, it's awful. Yeah, uh, he looks like a <laughs> Hanna-Barbera villain from 1972. Oh, no. it's, it's awful. It's true. It's Dirk fantastic. Dastardly's dickish cousin who enjoys intern love. Aged oh, very God. quickly. For the longest time, he looked like identical like he just didn't age very much he just constantly looked the same and then seemingly overnight he like fast forwarded 30 years like now um he, yeah he he looks like a 3d you know model of himself that got stuck under a heat lamp for four hours he's he looks like oh, the kind of he, he has the kind of face that you think the scooby-doo game is going to yank off to reveal the real vince underneath it well and you know what's worse is when he dyed the hair the eyebrows and the mustache he looks worse than if he had just left the natural Oh. sort of gray color in yeah he he looks like a bond villain from like an off brand uh like 60s spinoff he's like he's the thunderball bond villain of like oh mr bond my mustache and oh. i will get you i'm just really shocked that he 
he let himself do that too, just because he's always somebody that's been very aware of his appearance and very vain. Mm. So, so he would have struck me as the type of fellow that would have looked in the mirror and been like, I need to cancel my appearances until this is fixed. <laughs> a delusion uh, is a very heady drug, my friend. And I'm sure that to him, he thinks he looks like a million bucks. Or of a course. couple billion. But you know what he should he have said the money. to his hairdresser? You're fired! <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael, I think you've established we've uh, you got a little bit more here? A little bit more, okay. just a little bit Milk more. I, I want So, Power Slap isn't the only iteration of the sport in the Americas. Oh, I will God. end on one more brief mention of the sport, one that involves one of the most bizarre team-ups I've ever heard of. In March of 2022, an unregulated, their words not mine, slap fighting league named the Slap Fighting Championship was hosted by Arnold Schwarzenegger and internet personality Logan Paul. Hosted at the Arnold Classic Sports Festival, it was headlined by David Zales Zalewski. Nailed it. Who? Uh, <laughs> sure. Um, close enough for government work. Who only four months prior to that competition caused Walziak's fatal complications. So he was the one that took out the Polish fighter. Four months prior to this championship. Well, so was was the Polish fighter's death though? Was it a legal hit or slap? It was. I oh I didn't look to I didn't look into that well, to see if it well, was like I mean, if it was my, an illegal hit. It matters, well, yeah. No, well, actually, yeah. no, I disagree. It would matter because like if it was an illegal hit, then I'd be like, well, why are we letting him in future competitions? That should be it, right? Uh, because he's but, got a big name. But but if but I mean if it was an illegal hit and then you cause somebody's death. Like, then you should probably well, be like, well, let's take him out of the sport. But if it was a legal hit and the guy just died, then he'd be like, well, if you're going to continue the sport, it, I would think be the fact him that unfairly. the guy died in general should probably say this sport should be discontinued. No, not, not, yes, dis no, I'm not arguing but, that. I agree. But if the sport is going to continue and yes. the guy did a legal hit, then I wouldn't say that there's a problem having him continue on. I mean, they let Drago fight after dispatching Apollo Crews. Exactly. So. Exactly. True. Very Rocky true. Four. Perfect case you. in point. If he um, dies, he dies. <laughs> when asked why Schwarzenegger would host such an event, he responded, quote, <laughs> I'll be the, back. Arnold, <laughs> the Arnold Classic right. is a sports and fitness festival. No, I, won't. I disagree. I'm, I'm gonna... He responded, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. Um, and and, and we never... The Arnold Classic is a sports and fitness festival, and we never kind of choose or have an attitude no matter what the sport is. So people ask me, why would you have that? I say I got the same question when we had an axe throwing competition. Why would you have archery? Why would you have an event where people are physically handicapped? We have everything. We have sports after sports after sports. We don't judge anything. We are only there to have people compete and people watch and be entertained and inspired. I know we're going to have a great time watching the slap competition as long as we don't get slapped. I'm glad that we are past the lie part of the show, because yipes. I would have assumed yeah. that saying, why would you have physically handicapped people would have been a made up quote, but no. Yeah, or a no. quote from like 1992 and not 2022. God. Nope, he, he said that in, in response to why you have a competition where people just stand there and slap each other. But, well, we have sports where people are handicapped. I mean, just I, said I, paycheck. I, I, I was lobbying. I wanted them to bring back the cockfighting when they would let me do that. So obviously I'd have something for the Arnold Classic which is, uh, other than, you know, cock showing. So I did slap fight, which is great because I'm very, very scared with the slap. Well, as we all know, uh, getting his house cleaned cost him a lot of money. <laughs> so that May is charging him a fortune. So he needs as much cash as he can get. Oof. Yeah. And that was actually where I was going to end with. All right. With the, we got handicapped people competing. Why not let people slap each other? So. I mean, they're not mutually exclusive. No, they are not. Oh, bad. So this is where I drop a bombshell and say that. Doc and I miscounted the number of lies that you had gotten. You had gotten five, not six. 
See, I said four when we were talking. Well, and so so you're correct. I did miscount. However, uh, he did concur. And so then I when I started resting on my heels because I was like, or laurels, because I thought, well, there's no reason to keep an eye out now. Mm -hmm. So I mean, granted, you did get five of the six lies. Well, and so. also, all I needed to say was whatever the first sentence of every new asserted <laughs> paragraph, paragraph that you bring up is, is a lie. How about that? Yeah. So, okay. so the I'll just say the only lie that you guys did not get, because pretty much most of the episode, most of the history was bullshit so the only thing that you had missed and i'm glad doc had uh was aware of this event with uh the full name buffalo bill safety demar hamlin um so demar hamlin did not suffer a full body seizure upon getting hit during a football game he suffered cardiac arrest oh shoot you're right that's right yes Mm -hmm. I so, just knew something happened with him, and because the, then there was a big thing when he came back to like training and stuff, and everybody was like, "Oh, look!" But I don't. And, yeah, okay, fair see, enough. And, I'm just looking yeah. forward to his Wild West snake handling show that's going to be winging your <laughs> way, you know, on the on the weird carny circuit next month. Where like, well, I'm <laughs> Buffalo <laughs> Bill Safety Demar Hamlin coming to your town. You know, watch what, me though? handle this python. If if we hadn't already like if you if you hadn't said you've got all the lies and we were good i'd have called bullshit on that only because we did stop because shane stopped to talk about it we had a little side piece about it and i would have been like you know what we stopped to talk about this was any of this bullshit? let's talk about Just another trope of this show which is every time we get to the end of the show and start railing out the lies you're like you know i would have no, called that no no if, no, no. Uh, if this had happened or, you know if the if the rain in spain stayed no, mainly no, no. on the plane excuse me, sir. i would have excuse gotten me. that lie but excuse you me, sir. interrupted about the rain in the plane so to I, talk about me, the last time I was only raised with cockroaches crawling out of my console sir, games. I have and if I had been raised with a better, my, you know, childhood, I, I would have gotten that lie. Sir, I have already proven that my statement is factually correct because earlier in, in the podcast, I literally <laughs> called a lie only because we stopped to have a little chat. And I said, ah, wait a second. I better call a lie just because we stopped to chat. And that is a trope of this cast. But so I would have done it just because we stopped as well. And I'd have been like, you know, it's going to bite me again if I don't. If I can and also assert that I, generally speaking, try to be a little more tasteful in how I call lies, which is I will get to the end of a sentence, we'll have our moment and pause, and then I'll say, is that for true? <laughs> or, you know, change <laughs> it up and, true, and play true. around with, like, you know, give Michael a bit of uh, time to feel his oats, feel like he'd gotten over. And if you'll remember, <laughs> I had asked a significant portion of questions Getting up to the point where then you just interjected wildly, <laughs> just ejaculated all over. It's like, is that a lie? And I was like, exactly. I was working my way towards it. I just wanted well, to give him a moment to make. I Do was we... in the process, oh, and then you just you, immediately you leapt in. Like, is that just... a lie? Uh, this is also why he doesn't like hand jobs. Hold on a second. He wants it to end. He so, doesn't want so the on one hand, he just... On one hand, I let you ask, quote, a significant amount of questions. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But on the other hand, I immediately leapt in. Which is it, Shane? It's Which is it? Either I immediately timing, leapt in. And I was in the process of <laughs> working you into. you a ton of questions or I immediately jumped in. Go, you you re-listen. I know this. So go listen back to the tape. And if you think I wasn't leading into questioning whether that was a lie, then you're mistaken. Well, if you had already People listening out, on YouTube, what? if you think Shane is right, leave a comment. If you think Doc is right, leave a How like. How about just if we're all blowhard assholes and we shouldn't listen to the show anymore, I'll never hear from you. It's a so, I oh, mean, damn it. <laughs> call that, to, you know, just a, a, a hasty conclusion on all of our parts. Also, Mr. Oh God, I, here we go. Well, hold on a second. I was asking a bunch of questions. You didn't call out a lie for the Buffalo Bill thing. So you're you're he didn't know. No, but he, he, no, he but, didn't no, know. But about he's it. using that to refute my saying when we pause. No, I, well, I start the Buffalo Bill lies. thing happened in an entirely different context. I was going back to referring to the prior section. Correct. Where the a example lie was that I called. Right. It, as an example of my, that was my evidence as to see, I do call it now when we stop to talk about something, I call the lie. I, so was I was simply using chuckling that at the fact that, that I had no idea what in the holy hell he was rambling about. <laughs> and it sounded like something completely contrived. And uh, well, yeah. So at any rate, well done, Michael. You got oh, one for fuck's us. sake. Okay. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we're not throwing another flag on the field. Here's my seventh caveat. No, no. Is, you know, 
If this was the year of the rat, I would have gotten that lie. <laughs> I just said congratulations, Michael. What more do you want? <laughs> no, no, no. The only thing I was going to say was I did mention that there is a part two to this episode mm-hmm. or to this, you know. Bullshit. Topic. There is, but it is somewhat different. And I kind of mentioned there is a twist. So I'm going to come clean about this episode. I didn't write most of it. I took a five paragraph script and expanded it into the episode that we had heard. Did you get chat GPT to write it? <laughs> and that's what we're going to talk about next week. We're going to talk about chat GTP and why it's not as scary as people think. <laughs> Why it's I just had a very lengthy conversation, yeah. a meeting about this with regards to like academic integrity. We had a meeting about all of this because uh, we've had people using uh, chat GPT to write papers. Let us save that for next week. <sighs> so you so did we're... have so this was an AI generated script. Uh, it was five paragraphs. I expanded out, but essentially the bare bones of it. Yes. So I was written by chat GTP after all of this. We are going to actually coalesce into the 200th episode of this show. And you're going to tell me that we have to discuss Skynet becoming self-aware. No, it's nowhere near as sad and depressing as that. It's actually going to be quite funny to see how people will take something like this and blow it way out of proportion. Uh, Sorry, Uh, just, just to quickly backtrack... Were you if, saying if you know that if I had seen Terminator, I would have gotten that? <laughs> no, I, I was just trying to make sure I heard correctly. <laughs> what what program did you use to write this tool again? Chat PPP. I'm going. I'm going to talk about that and more. And this was a teaser. A very no, just slight, just like name, a, just just say the name. Chat PP Fleave. P T. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, the one that people are talking no, about. No, exactly. That's what I thought. But then I thought you had said TP, and I was like, "Wait a second, what?" Maybe I yeah. no. I just I I just cannot speak for I am an in, for I am incapable of enunciating. Chat EBT. All right, it was a teaser. <laughs> I pre- I appreciate it. Well done, flushing out five paragraphs via the AI system. I think that's uh, quite good. From what well, I've seen for the uh, wrestling bios page as well, they do that. For some of the fake pay-per-views, theoreticals between WCW and WWF, and it's also done a really good job there. So to your point, I think that there's a lot of uh, opportunities there for future scripts, future uh, No, whatever. as we'll see, it, it is not. I, I'm going to, yeah. That is what I will end with. That is what I will end with. As we will see, it was not. Well, if this episode is any evidence, I will say that, yes, it is very predictable insofar as it falls into <laughs> certain rhythms about how it asserts itself. But, uh, okay, well, Agamemnon called it, and I'm just going to say that here and now for full finality. <laughs> but uh, I, as, I'm as i not fooling. Next episode is, is episode 200 of this salty little show, and I am agog that we have made it this far without further eruptions. <sighs> into debates about why a lie wasn't called in the middle of the episode. Oh, but... for God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> let it go. I can't. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Chaji bitchy didn't bother me anyway. <laughs> well done. Okay. I, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be fun, and uh, I hope I enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed This week's ball of nonsense, because that was uh, very entertaining and we went crazy all over the place. So it is appreciated. Are we uh, so we don't need to give a recap of the six lies just for the sake of clarification. I feel like we kind of explained it in the moment. Most of them were just if there was any sort of inclination towards slap fighting having a history it was all bullshit. (laughs) I like that. I think my creation is a little bit more intriguing. That, uh, you know, in Youngtown, would... Ohio, in 1973, two people fought over a low-priced pack of honey-baked ham in a parking lot somewhere, and this is the birth of the slap fight. I think that's far yeah. more colorful than any of this other nonsense, but that's me. Yeah, I mean, as we'll see, 
as we'll see, there was a rhyme and a reason. All right. For all I'm of looking it. forward to it. Well, uh, thank you all for being here as per usual. And if you enjoyed the exploits of chat GPT on this uh, glorious <laughs> little installment, you can let us know in the comments. We would love to hear it. And of course, if you're enjoying the content, like subscribe, rate and review. We would love to hear from you. It is a delight every single time, especially when you are flaming all of us. So, yes, we, we cannot wait be told how awful we are at this uh if you heard all of the cat screaming in the background my sincerest apologies for my my poor feline who's got separation anxiety right now and uh, other than that we look forward to reconvening with all of you on our glorious anniversary installment next week and i will try to find a way to get even more intermittent noise to be interjected so that we feel at home on an anniversary episode it's very important to keep that trope around, going don't worry. Type as much bring as you want. Some pots and pans. Yes, yes. Yeah. Turn on the fan. Have your daughter involved. Just bring her in. She can be a guest. <laughs> Done. Oh, no. Done. Yes. <laughs> you can bring your your brick and your rope, and you know, just toss it around all you want. And it'll be great. Bring some limbs down in the in the process. But uh, sounds good. I think we're going to officially wrap this thing up like a slap heard round the world. And hopefully you will not be unconscious at the end of it like all of those poor unfortunate fools that had their lights put out. But uh, thank you all for being here as per usual. Of course, we have new episodes of the show winging your way every lovely Monday morning on your preferred podcast provider app. So check us out there. Or if you're over here on the tubes of you, please subscribe. We have more in material winging you our way every fantastic Friday with our disinformed after dark we'll see what uh, the after dark looks like this week maybe we will see a slap fight or two i got a slap fight but it's not the ones that you guys are thinking okay. of it's gonna be great it's kamala clapping his belly before he does like the the full uh, splash on somebody i wish that does sound interesting as well maybe we'll watch that as in addition jury why did you draw a banana on my belly it's a moon <laughs> man <laughs> all right, moving on. So uh, thank you all for being here. We delight in your presence, and we hope that you delight in ours. And, uh, you know, keep coming back. It works if you work it, and we're worth it. And I hope that you are also worth it as well. So enjoy the rest of your week, folks, and we will see you next week for the anniversary. So for the Disinformed Podcast this week, I'm Shane. And I'm Michael. And I'm Michael. And zippity zoop, we're out of here. Fuck you, asshole.